everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Cody, the Astro Adventurer, and I have a good video lined up for you today. We have a lot of new goodies that came, and I'm going to be doing an unboxing video and kind of an installation video of some stuff that I got, and I'm going to be installing it on my other telescope. You see my two telescopes back there? Very excited about this because I'm going to be able to run two telescopes now with these new products that I got. So up first we have, um, this is the guide camera. I got a second guide camera. It's the ASI 120mm Mini. So we're just going to open that up here and nothing too big, but it's got the little guide camera. Um, it's just like the one I have on the other one right there and it just comes with a ton of accessories of course I've, I'm getting so many of these cords but we're gonna going to need the uh, foam cord this time because well ST4 cord it's a uh, the auto guiding cord so we're going to use everything um, connected into the ASI Air so that's that we'll um, install that on there in a second next thing we have uh, is the ASI Air Plus now I'm very excited about this um, I Went back and forth on whether I was going to get the Mini or the Plus. Uh, I did decide to go with the Plus in the end. That's what I've got on my uh, bigger rig behind me here with the Celestron C8. I've got the ASI Air Plus. But the reason I decided to go with this over the Mini, um, not just because I wanted to spend an extra $100, that wasn't it, but also because uh, it comes with two uh, USB 3 ports and it also comes with an expandable uh, area so you can put SD cards in there and that's what I do with that one. I use a 256 uh, gigabyte SD card in there. It only has like uh, 32 gigs of internal storage so um, which isn't enough. So I, I have a good thing where I take the, third, the 256 gig out of there, put it into a little flash drive and, and load it on my computer and then I can put all my uh, pictures there. So I does not have that on the mini so that's why I got the plus and then I wanted those uh, two uh, additional USB 3 ports uh, because some of the cameras I use uh, and other things want the USB 3 ports so I wanted to have the upgrade ability there if you will so let's go ahead and open this up as you can see I haven't even gotten the plastic off of here yet so let's get that off of there first without scratching the box hopefully there we go and just get this thing open And I love this. This just like slides out of the bottom here. I think this is really good packaging. I always like that. I hope you guys can see that on camera. There we go. So we have the ASI Air Plus right in here. Just gonna take it out. And you know what? I, I this is a lighter rig. I, I might even use this as like port like a portable rig as well, but. It's not that heavy between the difference in weight between the ASI Air Plus and the ASI Air Mini. So I'm perfectly fine with this. It's not going to add that much weight. And plus, I actually am going to mount this on uh, the back part of the mount here. Um, so it won't be moving or adding to the weight of it as well. So we'll get that installed here in a second. Uh, the ASI Air Plus comes with a bunch more cables as well. Uh, it comes with the uh, a box here that we can open that has all the additional 12 uh, volt connections as well. Uh, I love this, I have so many of these now because it's the second one I bought, but uh, you can never have enough of these. Uh, I, I'm using several of them for the dew heaters on both of the telescopes as well. Um, so yeah, all these connectors uh, for that. And then in the bottom here, we do have the antenna for the Wi-Fi. So we can go ahead and screw that on there. Easy, just like that. All right, so now we can get everything mounted. That's the unboxing. Well, we do have a couple other things, I guess. Well, well I'm getting ahead of myself because I do want to get this mounted, but let's, let's open up a couple more things here. I'm going to use this last, and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, but this, I'm doing it a little bit differently this time. I'm not going with a cooled um, Astro camera like I got on my other rig. Um, I got a really good deal on a uh, Nikon. Uh, DSLR. It's a, a, a uh, I think it's an ASPC sensor. Yeah, so it's about 20, 
24 uh, megapixels. It's really nice. Um, and I just honestly, I didn't want to spend the $1,800 to get another ASI 2600 MC Pro. And so we're going to use a DSLR in this new one. So I got this off of eBay. This is a Nikon uh, D5500. And if you're looking for a used DSLR, um, this would, uh, to do astrophotography, this would be a great starter camera. Um, the uh, D, a lot of people start with uh, Canons and stuff. Everyone knows Canons, Canons, Canons. And I looked at Canon for a while. I did a lot of research when I was doing this. And I actually decided to go with Nikon um, because Nikon has a, uh, a, a, they're a little bit cheaper and they have some really good cameras for astrophotography and they're, that are compatible with the ASI Air uh, Plus. That's one thing you got to make sure. This is compatible with the ASI Air Plus. And it, if you look on camera comparisons, this one is better than the uh, uh, Canon Rebel T7i. Uh, and it's it's less expensive as well. It's it's not as people I guess just don't know as much about it. This is again the Nikon D5500, and it's a phenomenal camera, and I think it's going to work uh, perfectly for what I needed. I I could have gotten a dedicated astronomy camera again, um, but the ones that I was willing to buy, I really wanted to, how much I wanted to spend. I didn't want to spend over three hundred dollars on a camera. I got this for under three hundred dollars. Um, they, the ones I would have gotten from ASI are, wouldn't be cooled anyway, uh, from, a, from ZWO and, and ASI, it, they wouldn't have been cooled. So, um, really wasn't going to be a big difference between this. I could get a lot larger sensor size, um, going with the DSLR. I couldn't get a sensor that was this size, um, the AS, uh, PC uh, sensor. I would have had to get like an 8 megapixel or something or put a planetary camera on there. And I didn't want to sacrifice on that. So I think this is going to work just fine. I mean, this is going to be more of my travel rig. I'm going to use uh, sometimes not even the telescope there. I'm going to just use uh, camera lenses. I've got a, I already had an Nikon lens. It's a zoom one that does uh, 70 to 300 millimeter zoom and uses ED glass as well. So real good lens. And I also uh, got a used uh, 24 millimeter f 2.8 lens to do milky way photography as, if i want as well so it'll be really good uh, to take the that on trips and this looks like it's in great shape it's the first time i've seen it uh obviously you know i bought it used um, from ebay and it looks like it's in um pretty much mint condition i would say so that's that and there's one other thing i wanted to show you all before i start putting the pieces on there and that is this bracket, this mounting kit, if you will, that I got. And I think this is called an L adapter, if I believe. Um, and it, it, it mounts on the body of the Nikon camera. It's made for Nikon. And it's going to allow me to uh, mount the guide scope onto uh, the back body of the camera, actually. So it's going to be really nice and portable. And I can still have auto guiding as well so i can still take long exposure pictures um, i don't have to sacrifice anything when i'm traveling so i'll i'll take the uh the d5500 the nikon d5500 with me i'll take a, probably a 24 millimeter lens and the the zoom um 70 to 300 millimeter lens with me and the mount you see behind me which is the uh the explorer scientific uh ixos dash 100 which is a pretty light mount and it'll easily handle the weight and the capacity with that camera and the lens. So it should, should be doing some good guiding under one arc second, hopefully. So I'm going to get that mounted on the camera too, but uh, for right now, I'm just going to show you um, kind of getting the installation on here um, for the uh, ASI Air onto the mount and then the um, ASI 120mm Pro uh, camera, uh, sorry, MM uh, Mini camera as well. So. Stay tuned, I'll be right back and we'll start installing. All right, I'm back here. Uh, I forgot to open one other thing. This is the uh, T-ring adapter, uh, Celestron makes it. And it's gonna let me uh, connect the DSLR to uh, the telescope. Now you won't need this when you're doing the lenses or when you're traveling with it, but for a telescope, you have to have a T-ring adapter uh, if you're using a DSLR camera or even a mirrorless camera. I had to have them, I used to use a mirrorless all the time. Um, when I have my Fujifilm camera. So I had a Fujifilm X-T-200, but I sold that a while ago once I got the 
astronomy camera, and I think this is going to be even better than that camera. So, anyway, got to put this on there first. This is the T ring adapter. All right, now we're just going to take the T ring adapter and install it onto the camera. There we go. Here, click in place. So now it's installed in there. You'll notice inside there, there are um, there is like a, a little bit of a second ring and you can take that ring out depending on what size you need. There's these little tiny holes in there that you can use a, a, a small um, Allen wrench to take that out. So I might actually have to do that depending on what my connection is there. I have to see in a second. But let's go ahead and let's install the DSLR on here. Now I've got my adapter already in there and I'm using a field flattener on my SV Boney 80 millimeter um, SV503 telescope, a refractor there. And I always use the 0.8 refractor, uh, uh, 0.8 uh, reducer and field flattener. It makes the pictures much more beautiful. It collects more light. I think it brings the focal ratio, I mean, the F uh, stop down from 7 to 5.6 right around there. So, real nice. And yeah, no, I think we're going to fit just perfectly on there. How about that? Almost like I planned it. So, I'm just going to spin that on there, connect her in there. And that's it. So obviously, oh, it looks like it's upside down, right? Well, we can always adjust that. No big deal. Spin that around. Now we're facing the right way with the thumb screws. All right. So that's that. Let's do the, uh, I'm going to do the uh, camera next, the ASI. Um, actually, I misspoke or this is the 290 and this is what I bought to upgrade my Celestron camera. So this is the 290. This is the ASI 290mm, and I've been using the 120, so we're going to switch the one out from here. And this is super easy. We'll take the USB cable out, take the 120, because I want the better camera, obviously, on my bigger rig. It's going to matter more. And we're going to put the ASI 290mm um, Pro MM Mini in there, just with the thumb screws put in there. I'm going to have to refocus that later, no problem and then take the cable back and just plug it in, just like that, no big deal. All right, so now we've got the 120 from my other, other telescope, I'm gonna put it in my uh, mini guide scope, here's a 30 millimeter guide scope, just made by SV Boney, perfect for this size of telescope, you don't need any more than 30 millimeter. If anyone tells you you do, they're lying. And I'm only using a 50 millimeter on the Celestron, as well, my C8, and I can guide under 0.5 arc seconds with this 50 millimeter SV Boney guide scope at full focal length, even. And and many times I use the uh, reducer, so you don't need to do off-axis guiding or anything. People are just trying to get you to do too many things. So we got this on here; it's good to go. Uh, next, I'm going to get the ASI air mounted. So. If you look in here, it already has the bracket on there. I'm not going to use um, the mounting thing here. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So we're going to take this off. So I have a kind of a flat base here, just with an Allen wrench. I look at that. I even guessed the right Allen wrench. How about that? All right, get this out of here. All right. And then, give me one second, I'll be right back and I'll show you what we're doing next. Alright, we're back here for uh, basically the final step, other than like hooking everything up with the cables. But this is kind of weird, I know a lot of people probably don't do this, but it works great. And I just, uh, I started doing this for this mount initially because this mount, I was way over the payload limit and it was uh, stressing the guiding and all that stuff. So I didn't want to mount another thing onto the scope and add more weight. I know this is not a lot, but it couldn't take anymore. So I'm actually going to put some uh, Velcro strips on there. If you look at the mount, I already have a piece of Velcro strip on there. And so now we're going to put the other piece on the bottom of the ASI air seat. It's just super easy to do. You just measure it out, what you need. So I think a strip like that should be fine. Cut it with some scissors. problem then you just unpeel the back of it here it's a super easy solution and I was at first afraid it would fall off or you know not work well but 
it's never fallen off. And I've had it in warm weather uh, and even super cold weather as well. I've never had it fall off, so it works super well. And then when I'm done with this, I can even take it off if I don't want to use this anymore, get a new mount, whatever I want to do. So make sure that's stuck on there well. And then we just take it and bring it over here and install it. It just sticks right on the pad that we already have there. Just like that. And now it's on there. It's on there very well. Look at that. It's not coming off at all. I promise you. I've used it in a lot of different weather and it's perfect. So that's it. Now we just have to take the cables and hook them up uh, from the ASI air into the mount. And you'll see online that people are like, oh, don't power your ASI air. I mean, your mount from your ASI air. Honestly, I do it all the time and it has never let me down. I've never had a problem with it at all. So you just want to come in here, plug in the mount and plug it in the ASI air, one of the ports here. And then we got to hook in the guide scope here. So we got to get it in one of our uh, other cables, our USB cables to plug it in. That. So I mean, I always use the longer ones just so there's not any binding or anything anywhere when the mount's moving around. So one end into the ASI um, 120mm and the other end, this is just, this is not a 3.0 port, this is a 2.0 port, so the other end, the USB 2.0 into the ASI Air Plus there. And then finally, um, we will have to hook in the camera into the ASI Air as well, and that's just gonna be a regular USB um, cable. If you come over here on this side, right here, I'll move it around. It'll just hook in one of the uh, USB cables in here, and then uh, the other USB end of the USB cable will hook into the ASI Air, just like that. And that's basically it. The only other thing we're gonna do, I use what's called a dummy battery, and I'm gonna put that in here. So I don't have, and that hooks into an AC adapter, or you can even hook into the 12 volts here if you use a step-down adapter. And that's gonna allow you to run your camera all night um, with your power bank or with the power out here or whatever, and you don't have to worry about your battery dying. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a mess over there I need to clean up still, or my wife's gonna get mad at me. So uh, this should um, get us all set up for a second rig so I can do both Nebula on this one right here on the uh, refractor, the 80 millimeter refractor, and Galaxies or smaller away nebula, a smaller nebula that are further away with my bigger rig, the C8. And so I can run both of them at the same time. One I'll probably use my iPad on, the other my phone, and I can capture two different targets uh, a night and get beautiful images and double, double the images every night. So thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, stay tuned for next time for more content. Take care.